All right. So um, <clears throat> let's go over um, making the most basic of dynamic blocks that you're probably used to seeing, and that is dynamic blocks with attributes inside of them. Um, an attribute is an, an editable text field that you can put inside of a block. Um, and when you double click the block, it gives you options to enter in information in those attribute fields. And I'm sure you've seen that if you're working with uh, any kind of architectural engineering construction drawings, you see maybe dynamic title blocks where you click the title block and you can see all kinds of stuff uh, that you can fill out. Um, that's it. what's one example of a, of, a, of a dynamic block with attributes. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, create a block with attributes. Here it says edit attributes, but we wanna create attributes. So um, are, they, are they even in here? Yeah, define attributes. So we wanna define attributes. Um, the command for this command line is ATTDF attribute definition. Okay. Um, and there's some options here Now look, I'm not going to lie. I've never needed to go through all these options. So I'm not going to go through all these options. If you need to just go ahead and F1 that, that beast right there. And, uh, it'll go through each one of the line items in here and what exactly they do. Anytime you have to do something where you want to get more information on a dialog box, hit that F1 button, smash that F1 button. It's going to tell you everything you need to know uh, for the most part. So, but I'm going to go with what I need to create a basic attribute and what you need to know. Um, <clears throat> here are the three main uh, fields. The tag is the name of the tag. And what happens is without any information input, this is like a nickname for the tag. Um, let's say um, I'm making uh, like a block where you can enter your name, um, your um, address, and something else, right? So this is going to be the name for the tag, right? So this is the name tag. Um, and prompt is, oh, what I forgot about, I forgot about tooltips um, where you can just hover over something and it tells you uh, what to do. Um, so I'll just, why wow, I should just read this stuff for you, uh, specifies the prompt that is displayed when you insert a block containing the attribute definition. Uh, if you don't enter a prompt, the attribute tag is used as the prompt. Um, all right. So <clears throat> this is usually like when you insert it, it will prompt you to enter information automatically, um, is what it's basically telling you. Um, uh, if you don't enter a prompt, the attribute tag is used as the prompt so this will be used as like the default or as the prompt um, if you don't give it your own name all right and then you have default default is basically what's there initially so if you don't put anything it'll be blank if you put like uh insert name then when you create the block insert name will be the default value okay and you'll see that I'll, if i don't have this here it'll be blank and these are your typical text settings. So um, we'll leave it left justify um, standard style. I haven't set any text style in this drawing. Um, I haven't even set the units. So we'll leave the text. We'll put the text height at just one. Uh, rotation zero. Then you have some other things here that I don't really want to get into, but they modify the the behavior of the attribute. Again, F1, that stuff. Um, we're just going to specify the insertion point. So we hit OK and just place it. Okay, this is not a typical text uh, object. If you double click it, it's not going to go to the text editor. It's going to it's going to open up the attribute definition editor where you see the main three prompts. You can also so you can if you double click it, you can only edit those three windows or those three uh, text entry areas we were looking at earlier. But if you want to edit more about it, go to the properties menu and you can change all that stuff over here. All right, so. Um, I could go make another attribute, but instead of that, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down. Um, 1.5, I guess, and another, th and like three. And then we'll just double click this. We'll change the name of this tag uh, to address. Uh, uh, insert address. And we'll change this last one to, I don't know, age. Insert age. Actually, I'll leave this some blanks so you can see what it looks like if you don't have a blank one. All right, so what you're seeing here are the tags, right? These are like the, the name of the tag, but it doesn't actually have anything to do with the value that's going to get inserted into the tag. So 
you'll see that when we block this, the moment we block this, it's going to start asking for values. Okay. So go ahead and create a block and we're going to call it, I don't know, form. Like it's a form we're filling out. We'll pick a base point uh, just down here somewhere. Select our objects. As soon as we create this block, it's going to ask me for the stuff that we need to insert. Now, remember that, uh, and that, and by the way, these things are out of order, which I will get to in a second. You can rearrange the order of these things. Age should have been last, but remember when we had the age thing, we left it empty. That's why you don't see anything here. As soon as we blocked it, it put in the default values of insert address, insert name, and then age is blank. So let's say, oh, this guy's uh, age is 45. Uh, his address is one, two, three, uh, anywhere. And his name is John Doe. Okay, hit OK. And that's what gets put into this area. But you'll notice that we just have text. It doesn't mean anything, right? Well, if we had done uh, some regular text lines, so let's put some text lines like here. We'll put some working lines. So we'll, oops, not color, copy. And we'll do uh, 1.5 and 3 again. Okay, and we'll do uh, regular, we'll do a single line text. Okay, we'll put it here. Uh, and we'll put uh, name. And we'll copy this down. And we'll put it here and here. Let's edit the text here and put address, name, and age. Now we can do attribute definition and put name, leave the default blank, say okay, put it right here. And then uh, we'll copy this down and we'll change this one to the address and we'll change this one to the age. Okay, get rid of these. Now, <clears throat> when I go over here and block this, because these are text objects, they're gonna stay the way they are. These over here are gonna be whatever the value that we put is. So if I go and block this, and let's say I put like a nice little rectangle around this, making an actual like form. Okay. Uh, we'll put the base point and the corner. We'll put the uh, name as, um, uh, also name of the block as form two, since we already, we already made a form one. If I do form two, it's going to ask me to, re uh, to redefine the block, but I'm, I'm only going to, I'm just going to make another one called form two. Okay. Uh, and select the objects. Say, okay. And it's prompting me because of those hat, because there were attributes there. So we're going to say age, uh, again, 45 address, one, two, three, anywhere. And the name is, uh, John Doe. And that looks a little bit cleaner. Right, because now I've got like titles. This is all still one block, okay? And this is the part you're probably used to. If you double click this block, you, it brings up this window where you can edit the attributes after the fact. Uh, the age, the address, the name. And if you pick a, um, you may know this already, if you pick a, an attribute to edit, you can go to the text options and modify the text for that particular line. So if I want to uh, modify, say, the name uh, entry, I can change the height to 0.5 and it will modify just the height of that one line uh, or the, the font or the justification, any one of those things. Same thing with property. I can change the property. I don't have any other layers in here, but I can change like the color of that particular property, which is super handy. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So we've got this for a lot of people. That's the extent of what a dynamic block is, but dynamic blocks can be so much more. So I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I'm handy with dynamic blocks, but I don't know everything. And there's so much more that you can do, especially when you get into the really advanced formulas and stuff like that. Um, and, and all the, the tables and everything, but I'm going to show you how to make a good portion of whatever you want to do. So dynamic blocks allow you to perform simple modification functions like move and stretch and array. Uh, I think even scale, um, to objects inside the block dynamically so, and in a controlled environment, like in a regular block, I cannot stretch this, right? Say I wanted to make this match, like maybe something closer to here, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do, and by the way, I just realized 
I'm gonna have to break this video up. There's no way I can cover everything about dynamic blocks in a short video. So, um, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video now, uh, or pretty, or in a minute here. Um, what you've just learned is how to create a dynamic block with uh, attribute definitions. We've we've used attribute definitions. A T T D E F is how to create an attribute definition. Um, and uh, you can uh, create the attribute like we just did. And then if you want to edit attributes, uh, um, you can just say edit attributes, which is, I guess is single, which brings this up. I'm not sure. I've never had a reason to use multiple. Um, edit attributes one at a time. Yes. Uh, enter a block name specification form two. This is all command line stuff. And then it puts you to pick a tag. Uh, I prefer just double clicking. It's just easier and you have all of them access here. If you do not have double click editing enabled, meaning in your options, which is off screen, in your options, if you go to your user preferences and this is not enabled, you cannot double click edit this, okay? So the only way to edit it at this point is either using the ribbon and saying edit, or not edit, that's block edit, um, edit attributes on single, okay, or typing in DDA TTE, which is uh, a block edit, uh, attribute edit actually. So either DDA TTE, which is your command, or in your ribbon going to uh, single attribute edit. Um, I don't know where the appropriate uh, toolbar for that one is. Let's take a quick look. AutoCAD, is there anything for blocks? Uh, because I don't really use it. I've always used, I've always just double clicked or you or back in the day I was using DDA TTE. Um, there was never really a reason to use the toolbar. Um, so I'm not going to even bother looking for that right now. Just, sorry. Just not going to be there. Could be under modify or draw. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to I don't see blocks in here. So here we go. block editor. I mean, it's kind of, you could do a ref edit maybe. Let me see. Ref edit. That's a block editor. Reference edit, same thing as block editing. You can just edit the block here instead. So it's like in place block editing. Um, what I'm gonna get to in the next one is actually editing a block after the fact and then uh, in the block editor, which will lead us to uh, other dynamic block options real quick. You can do that by typing in BE, which is block edit or hitting the edit uh, icon, which is not the same as the ref edit that I just did. It brings up the block editor, edit block definition. You say, okay, you can see both my blocks, form and form two. I'm gonna say, okay, it opens up a whole separate window. My drawing does not exist in this window. This is like its own sub drawing. And you get all this whole toolbar up here dedicated to the block editor. Um, where you can uh, test out your block after you've made changes to it, add uh, parametric constraints, um, add uh, parameters to it. Um, that We're going to get into all that stuff um, in the next videos. But right now, uh, we're going to end it here where uh, all you can do is if you want to, you can like rename this tag. Uh, there you go. I forgot I turned off my double-click editing, which I don't. Let's just leave that on. It's just best to have it. There you go. Now you can double click edit, so, and re-edit, you can name these. You can edit your block after the fact. Now I can stretch this manually if I want to, but in the next video I'm gonna explain how you can use the block to stretch this instead of having to come edit it after the fact, so. Alrighty, all right, good talk.